folk side of it. The, uh, the Triple J also, but in the folk side, are they um, open to digital delivery or are they still very much hard copy based? Well, again, like there's lots of different ways of approaching it, and it depends on sort of individual people's preferences. It's like in the publishing world, when you're pitching songs for sync, some music supervisors only want things delivered digitally, others only want them on CD, others want USB, like everybody's so different, it's making it so complicated. But that's why personal relationships are really important, because you know how to deliver music to people. The same applies, you know, like in whatever genre you have. Like generally, you know, you walk something into Triple J, they want it on disc, just because that's the guy who's programming the station is in his mid-40s and he's been listening to discs all his life. Who knows, the new music director might only want it digitally in future. But, you know, it's just about knowing, you know, who, who, to, uh, who to plug to. But uh, for folk music, there's, you've got to pitch to public radio Australia-wide and there are different ways of getting your music available to public stations all over the country digitally. Emma, did you want to jump in, like, I guess, um, on, on a radio? The particular specific? station that I work at is called FBI Radio, and the music uh, director there is, yeah, 20 years younger than the music director at the <laughs> and he loves a digital, and, and, I, and as the, I host the folk special show on that station, and I love digital, because it's faster for me. You can now get 30, 40, 50 CDs a week. If I have to unwrap every single one from its entire plastic thing, and if I can just string something straight away, it's just so much faster. Okay. Nice so it depends. Yeah, it depends. But technically, the technology wise, technology wise, and you're capable. I mean, like there are a lot of community stations in North America and Canada where they're not they're not equipped to deal with all digital files. Yeah. I think most countries. I think the nature of community radio may be a little bit different. Yeah. I think yeah. there's, there's a. Sorry. There's also a um, organisation called Air It, uh, or AMRAP. AMRAP. Yeah. AMRAP in Australia, and they have a section of their uh, website called Air It. Uh, and basically, they'll be the ones to tell you how to deliver. I know that for some. They deliver to community radio, is their specialty. Um, most of it is 50 or 100 CDs they put in the post. Um, it's a small fee to join. Um, it is community radio and they support community radio. Radio community supports it um, and it, it just works. The one on whole. that though, before you get too carried away, I don't know that they've opened it up internationally yet. Yeah, okay. They right. used to, they then went back to just Australian. It's fully funded by federal government. But the question can be asked yeah. to say which stations are now in a full digital format. And they'll they'll abs they're the right organisation to ask those questions mm. and it's in the handbook. It's the C B so the Community Broadcasting Association of Australia. So what about Play MPE? Do they? I think they'll take any they, for they a fee. Would, yeah. Yeah. It's more like a two dollar, yeah. I think, a, Sorry, a station it. fee. It's, it's brilliant. It's just and I used Play to, used MPA. to be, yeah, I and know. I think they're looking at it. But yeah, okay. was there other questions? I know the guys are probably happy to go to the bar and talk a little further <laughs> if there's. Um, I don't want to cast any generalisations. Only if there's Caesars involved, you know. Like. <laughs> but we might call it a wrap. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chloe and Rob, Jeff and Bob.